And on this video, I'm going to show you the setup and activation process for the launch X431 CRP919 series scanners. And as always, I'd like to remind you that I place a link in the description down below to this scanner in case you'd like to get one for yourself. Now, you'll notice that there are two ports on the top of the scanner, and one of them is going to be a full-size USB port. The second one is going to be a USB-C port. Now, I want to make sure that I fully charge this tablet via the USB-C port before I begin the activation and setup process. Also notice that there is a power button on the opposite corner right here. So I'm going to press and hold that button down until the tablet turns on. And the software is going to automatically launch. And what you'll find is your model number in the upper left corner, including the version of the app that you are currently running. Now also notice that there are several icons in the bottom that allows us to navigate this tablet like a traditional tablet. The first thing we're going to do is going to be create a login for us to update this tablet. However, in order for us to log in, we're going to have to connect the tablet to the internet. So we're going to select other modules. Now you're going to find the tablet settings icon. I'm going to tap that icon. And what I'm looking for is going to be the Wi-Fi connection. And you can see this is network and internet. So I'm going to tap that. And then it's going to say Wi-Fi. I'm going to click on that to turn on the Wi-Fi. I'm going to press on this little slider and that is going to look and search for Wi-Fi's in my area to connect to. Now I can select the Wi-Fi I want to connect to by tapping on it and enter the password for it. And after successfully connecting to your Wi-Fi, you can use the back arrow to go back to the main menu. I'm going to go back one more time and you'll notice that you're probably going to get this pop up telling you that there is already a newer version of the software that it is being run. So you are going to choose to either skip the version or update it. I recommend updating the main software before updating the individual modules. So I'm going to tap update. And while we wait for this to update, I want to point out that the app is not an app that you can find on the Apple store or Google store. This app comes preloaded in the tablet. So you want to be careful that you don't blank out the tablet because you will lose the app. Now, if you do lose the app, you can contact launch and they can provide you with another copy of it if you have the right credentials. Now, as you can see, now it's asking us if we want to install the update. Yes, I'm going to hit install. And finally, you get a confirmation that the app has been installed and you can hit open and the app is going to launch again. And if you go back to the upper left corner, you can still see the model number, but also you'll notice that it now reflects the current most up-to-date version of the launch app, which is different from the individual car modules that are used to diagnose the vehicle. But before we do that software update, we're going to have to create a login. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on login. And as you can see, it wants a username and a password. So if you have one, you can just punch that in. But if this is the first time you are using a launch device, you're going to want to create a new one by tapping on new registration. And here you can create your account by creating a username, creating a password and entering the information that is required on this form and then checking off this box and finally hitting the register button. But I do want to show you that you only need to enter the information that has an asterisk. For example, if you don't want to give out your phone number, you don't have to put that on there. This one right here requires me to enter the number that is shown on this side to prove that I am a human. And now I can tap register. And now I can enter the serial number and activation code. And that number is found on this piece of paper that also comes with the scanner. You'll find the serial number in this area right here, which I covered up. And that's going to go into this area. And the activation number is going to be inside of here. Now, I do want to point out that that code is private and confidential. So make sure that you do not share that information with anybody because this is what you're paying for. This code is what activates the scanner and the software. Offer. Also, Launch recommends that you inspect this piece of paper to make sure that nobody has tampered with it and nobody has opened it and taken a peek inside to take your activation code. I would also recommend being careful when you tear off the edges.
changes that way you don't damage the serial number or the activation code that is located inside of this envelope and i do want to show you what that looks like just in case you're curious this is where the information would be found on that piece of paper and then i can enter that here and hit activate and if for some reason you get this pop-up all you have to do is go back to the main screen and then you can hit the login icon and then tap login to log in and now you are presented with activation. So I'm gonna press activate and now I can again enter the serial number and activation code and hit activate. And with the scanner activated, you can see that now we are gonna be prompted to update the individual modules that allow this scanner to diagnose a vehicle. You could choose to temporarily not update and update them later, but I like to do update immediately. And also notice that you can scroll down this list to see the name of the module that needs update, the current version that you have on the scanner, the newest version that's available for download, the size of the update, and a brief description on the right hand side. But I also want to show you before I hit this update button that you could selectively update the scanner and by that I mean you can choose to unselect the modules that you don't want to update if you don't plan to use them. However there is plenty of space on this scanner so I usually like to leave everything checked off and just do a update all by hitting update. Now if for some reason you wanted to use the scanner before all the updates are done you could potentially do so by hitting this arrow and going back to the main menu. You can see on here under software of the icon, the number of updates that are pending. However, I strongly recommend updating this scanner fully before you begin to use it to make sure that you don't run into any issues when diagnosing a vehicle. And my last recommendation regarding the updates is that don't forget that these scanners have a subscription requirement in order for you to be able to get updates. Now, when you buy them brand new, they're gonna come in with a certain number of years. This particular scanner came with two years of updates. However, some scanners come with three, some come with five. It just depends how much you wanna pay upfront for the scanner. Now the scanner continues to work after the expiration time has passed, what you don't get is the updates. So I would recommend that if you don't update your scanner, at least make sure you update it right before your subscription expires. That way, when the subscription expires, you are left with the most newest version of the software at the time that the subscription happened to expire. And whether you update the subscription or not to continue to get updates, maybe a personal decision, it's not that much to continue to update the scanner. However, you could potentially just be getting updates for things that you might not ever use. I personally find that so far, I haven't had a need to extend the subscription on any of the scanners that I own, and I so far haven't had any issue diagnosing the limited numbers of vehicle that I have with the scanners that I have. And if you are working on a shop environment or a dealer or anywhere else that sees a lot of different vehicles and a lot of different systems that may require updates, definitely upgrade the scanner, continue to pay for that subscription service because that way it's gonna ensure that you have the best tools to help you diagnose that vehicle that you're working on. And this scanner is fully updated. So remember, I placed a link in the description down below to the scanner in case you wanna get one for yourself. And if you found any part of this video helpful, hit the like button to support the channel and stay tuned as I have a lot more videos coming up on how to use this scanner. So make sure you guys are subscribed so you don't miss those. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.